Hello, flight simmers. I hope you enjoyed that little nostalgia moment. When I saw this as a helicopter from Ash, I knew I had to try and recreate the intro credits as best I could without actually having any human actors available. Special thanks to Photos by Kev on FlightSim.to for making the original film set. Without it, this intro would have been a lot less impressive. There's a link to the scenery in the description. In this video, we'll be looking at deliveries and options available, startup procedure, and the flight model presets. Then we're going to switch location to the Philippines to try out the floats. Now, before anyone says it, I realise this livery isn't totally accurate to the MASH series. Like, for instance, how it says army on the side rather than MASH being the most obvious. But still, it looks pretty good. It does have the stretches on the side, which I can only assume must have been pretty terrifying to ride on, with the air blasting down from the rotors and only a small visor to protect your face. Couple that with being wounded, and it's got to be a pretty unpleasant ride. I'm pleased to see Flyer Side are given the same attention to detail that they gave the B206 with the mechanical movements. I love how the swashplate moves when you move the cyclic. And of course, the collective pedals change the pitch of the rotors and tail rotors respectively. You can add and remove the doors, and of course, open and close them when they're added. By default, they're added, but I quite like them off on this helicopter. And we also have our co-pilot from the B206, should you want some company. There are a few different deliveries available, as well as a version with floats, which comes with its own set of deliveries. However, we'll come to the floats a bit later. The overall quality of the deliveries is pretty good. Although you can see the pilot's hands sticking through the bodywork. But you have to get pretty close before the edges start to blur. On the inside, all the dials are crisp and sharp. The only real difficulty is that it's quite hard to read the ones at the bottom in VR, but this is more an issue with the helicopter's design than with the simulation version of it. I guess they didn't anticipate how functional this design would be in virtual reality 70 years later when they were designing it. There is actually a middle seat, but whoever sat there better be good friends with the co-pilot because they'll be straddling their collective. And there's a little first aid box, which doesn't do anything, but is a nice touch. If you have the governor enabled, which it is by default, then startup is fairly straightforward. Start by pushing the mixture to full rich, then turn on the master battery and fuel prime switches. The fuel primer only needs to be on for a few seconds. While it does its thing, switch your magnetos to both and turn on the strobe. Give it another second or two, and then turn off the fuel prime switch. Now, press the engage starter button on the collective. If you did everything right, you should hear the piston engine roar into life, and it sounds outstanding. Once the RPM stabilises, turn on the alternator and any lights you want. There is a setting to disable the governor, just in case realistic isn't quite challenging enough for you. The real B-47 doesn't have a governor, so the pilot has to control the throttle manually. Fly aside have included an optional governor, as most easy affordable flight controls may not support the additional access required. Sadly, my controls fall into this category, so I haven't been able to try this out. But if you do have a suitable setup for this, give it a try and let me know how it goes in the comments. Like the B206, Flyerside claim that their B47 has the best piston engine helicopter flight model in MSFS. It also has a management console. This one came direct from the Flyerside website, rather than the MSFS marketplace. So the management interface runs on an external application rather than directly inside the helicopter. This makes it a little less convenient when in VR, as you have to remove the headset to use it. But once you're set up, you don't really need to do anything with it. So it's not that much of a big deal. We'll start off in easy and picking up into a hover is as simple as lifting the collective, with little to no input required from the other controls. It's very stable in this mode, and easy to manoeuvre around in a hover. And the biggest challenge of landing was maintaining enough forward momentum to reach the spot I was aiming for on the helipad. The helicopter does slow down very easily, which takes a little getting used to. We 
we're going to jump straight to realistic now because medium is pretty much just halfway between the two. I do like the way the dust swirls around you when you load to the ground. Just be aware when manoeuvring in a hover that this can make it hard to see. And you can see almost immediately that I'm having to work more on the inputs to keep it under control. I had heard that the B-47 on realistic could be a bit of a handful, but once you get a feel for it and you think ahead, then it's actually quite manageable. The only difficulty I've had is taking off in a strong crosswind, in which case you need to turn into the wind as soon as possible. Now you don't see piston engines being used for helicopters that much nowadays. The reason being that they tend to be a little underpowered for what a helicopter needs, and are easy to overstress. So you need to keep an eye on your oil temperature and pressure gauges. However, they're right at the bottom of the console, and that's a little difficult to see in VR. So I mostly rely on the manifold pressure gauge and the RPM. As long as you keep everything within limits, you should be okay. But bear in mind this isn't a fast helicopter. If you push it, you can manage a cruise speed of around 80 to 90 knots, but if you push it too hard, the first thing you're going to know about it is your engine suddenly going quiet. And if that happens, you better pick out a spot to auto-rotate onto, fast. But that'll come later. Landing is definitely more challenging and realistic. It's still quite quick to lose airspeed when you pitch back, which, when you get used to it, does make it a lot easier to come to a hover. But as you transition to a hover, you have to manage the power with your collective, so you don't sink too fast or balloon upwards. All the time, keeping your rotation in check with the anti-torque pedals, without being pushed off the mark by ground effect. We relocated to the Philippines, and the Manila project by Cliff4D, which is also available from flightsim.to, to have a look at the floats on the B-47. As you can see I'm parked on the beach, but there is enough water for the floats to be making me, well, float. This does present a bit of an issue when starting the engine though. We go to the normal startup, but as the rotors start to spin, the helicopter twists to the right, as there's no friction from the ground. We can give it full left pedal, but the RPM hasn't reached a point where the tail rotor will have any effect yet. Once the RPM gets going though, we will start to twist back. But as long as you're on the water, we need to make constant small adjustments. Now, when I reviewed the current sim H125 and E500, I commented that one of the things I was disappointed with was that when you landed in water, it was like being on land, as you couldn't move anywhere. Well, that's not the case here. It takes a little while to get unbeached, but if I pitch forward and put in a little collective, I can indeed taxi around on the water. And there's no unsightly boxing around the floats. is much the same as landing on land, only without the land part, but this does make it a great helicopter for exploring these kind of picturesque coastlines. As a tradition, we're going to finish with an auto rotation. But rather than cutting the fuel or closing the throttle, I'm going to go for a twofer and demonstrate overstressing the engine as well. If I yank the collective all the way up, it's not long before the engine gives up and cuts out. And of course, the great thing about auto rotating into the sea is that it's really hard to miss. So, this helicopter isn't very fast. It doesn't have hundreds of different add-ons, the versicular range styles are a little awkward to read, especially in VR, and it's really easy to break. But I love it. The flight model does everything it's supposed to do in terms of behaviour as far as I can see. The visibility from the cockpit is great thanks to the big glass bubble, 
and it works properly on water. But most of all, I like the sound. That rotor chop noise is just so good. And it's got character, which I'm aware is the same thing you might hear from a used car salesman, but it does. If you've got the gear and want to go really hardcore, turn off the governor and manage the throttle manually. On the other hand, if you're just getting started or you just want a chilled ride, set it to easy or medium and just enjoy the scenery. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please go ahead and do the subscribe thing. And if you're new to the channel, say hi in the comments. Until next time, fly safe.